Thank you so much. My name is Amber Mokia Ali. I'm the Rapid Ohia Death Outreach Coordinator. I have the honor of introducing Kylie Lefebvre, who's going to be our presenter for today. Kylie is the planner for the Coordinating Group on Alien Pest Species, or you might have heard of them, CGAPS. This past year, she has been working with the Rapid Ohia Death Outreach Group and other partners to engage students in a civics lesson and real-life hands-on experience in advocating for a bill that would designate Ohia Lehua as the state endemic tree in this year's legislative session. So without further ado, I am gonna hand it over to Kylie so she can share her screen and let's get this rolling. Thanks ladies. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm excited to talk to you about um, advocacy and about Hawaii's legislative uh, uh, legislature system and um, about three hopefully simple ways that you can uh, participate hopefully in this year as we've already kicked off in January the legislative session um, and but first I'd like to preface my presentation by saying that uh, this is not to my area of expertise um, I'm coming to you as somebody who has worked for the past eight years as a field technician um, as in an outreach specialist and also now a planner, um, all in the realm of conservation and invasive species. And uh, so a little bit of how I got to working with um, legislature and um, learning more about advocacy and this whole process is that uh, we had some communities within uh, the conservation realm that were talking about, well, what more can we do? You know, we, we're the boots on the ground, we're the people who are doing outreach, but um, as far as like the legislature, sometimes that can be a little daunting and it definitely was to me. And uh, so I would love to share with you a little bit about how um, I learned about this process and how we're gonna hopefully um, teach more people in the state. Uh, so like Amber mentioned, I have been working with students across the state to uh, learn about the legislative session. And then again, for the their participation in uh, this is this year's um, legislative process through a project to designate Ohia the state endemic tree. Um, and so we wanted to give the students that lesson in civics, but also that hands on experience. And so I'm going to keep on referring back to this project that we've been embarking on um, throughout this presentation, just as uh, kind of a learning lesson that I have had and hopefully that you can take something back um, as well because I went through this process and um, this is what I've learned and hopefully I'm just going to be teaching you the basics and show you that it's uh, a little bit, you know, not as uh, scary as I had originally thought. It's um, uh, kind of comfortable sometimes to talk to the legislat legislators and so hopefully you'll feel that way too. So. I'm going to start sharing my screen here and get into my presentation. Yep, so as I mentioned, I work for uh, CGAPS here. And um, so hopefully we'll talk about um, the three ways to participate, which would be to contact our legislators. And then we're going to talk about submitting testimony and also just kind of how to navigate the, the Capitol website, because that's going to be uh, the way that you're actually going to submit testimony. So those are the, the three main things that we're going to be talking about. But first, I'd like to back up a little bit and talk about how a law becomes a law, just really briefly and um, kind of scratching the surface in terms of that. So, you know, the first thing that has to happen is that um, it starts with an idea. Somebody has to come up with some kind of an idea for a law. And so, like I mentioned, um, you know, a group of conservationists that are in my realm, we got together and we started thinking about how we can start, um, you know, engaging folks in the state uh, in this process and to hopefully get them more comfortable with um, advocating for some bills for conservation and such um, in the future. And so, one of the things that we were thinking of was to talk to the students and help them to learn about that process and then to also uh, designate Ohia as the state endemic tree which would help to provide protections for Ohia. So we're going to use that um, 
uh, that real life experience in, um, in teaching the kids. And so, sorry, mind you, I have some kids <laughs> screaming in the background, but um, so that was where kind of our idea started with. And so hopefully it was a win-win for everybody. We get to teach the kids and then we also get to engage them in this real life experience of hopefully this bill to become a law for the state endemic tree. So that's the idea. The next thing that has to happen is to contact our legislators, because what you need to do is get a legislator to hear your idea for a law, which is uh, would be a bill, um, and then hopefully get them to agree that, yeah, this sounds like a good idea. And then they would agree to introduce the bill to the rest of the legislators so that that can be up for debate, whether it should become a law. The next step would be that the legislator, most likely their uh, office would draft this bill. And then after um, it is introduced to the rest of the legislators during the legislative session, then it is assigned and then scheduled to be heard at committees. And now what that is, is committees are groups of legislators that focus on certain topics. So for instance, we're gonna, there's a topic on agriculture, there's a committee on water and land and education, those kinds of things. So there are groups of legislators that are going to talk about certain topics. So the next step that has to happen is that the bill needs to pass through those committees. Again, those groups of legislators that talk about certain topics. So the legislature is broken up into two groups. That's the House of Representatives, and then you have the Senate. So wherever a bill is introduced by a legislator, so say a senator from the Senate introduced the, the bill, then the committees within the Senate side, so many times it would be uh, assigned to maybe two or three different committees on the Senate side. If everybody on in those committees agree that this should still become a law, that we should pass it, there might be some changes along the way. And then again, it has to go through that process where each of the committees will have to hear, meet about it, talk about it, and agree if it should become a law. If they don't agree, then they can uh, just not pass the bill and say that it, it quote unquote, it died, that the bill died, and then it ends there. But if all goes well, and if all of, all of the committees within both the House and the Senate agree that this bill should become a law, then uh, the governor can either just sign it into law, he can veto it, which, which means that he denies that, or he can just let it become a law without signing it. Um, but in the end, if it's not vetoed, then your bill has become a law either way. But I'd like to also say that don't be discouraged if the, your bill doesn't make it, especially the first time, because majority of the bills actually don't make it every year. Um, you know, so sometimes it might take two to three times, maybe a little bit more convincing, maybe some changing of, of the language in a bill for it to actually become a law. So it may not be the first go around. So that's just generally, really quickly, how a law becomes a law in our state of Hawaii. So the, as I mentioned, the first thing that you can do, even before legislative session begins in every January, is to contact your legislators. Like I mentioned, we had to start talking to our legislators in order to get them to hear our idea for the bill and to ask them to actually introduce it. So you, this could just be giving them a call or sending them an email. And then you would ask for them also, if there is already a bill, you could also just ask for them to support or to oppose that bill. Okay, and so there are a few different groups of legislators that we can recommend for you to, uh, to reach out to. And so one of the first ones is to find your own district legislators, the ones that are representing your area of, of the state. 
So one of the ways that you can do this, the easiest way, is to use the Find Your Legislator tool on the Capitol website. The Capitol website is that capital.hawaii.gov. Pretty simple. Um, there's a Find Your Legislator tool on there, and this is a screenshot of what that interactive map looks like. So you would just enter in your address right here in the search box, and then it'll zoom, zoom in to where your district is. And then it will also show you who is your representatives on both the House and the Senate side. Each district will have both. And uh, in this page, it'll just show you kind of the basic information, contact information, like their phone number and their email. So that's one of the ways that you can find uh, your district legislators. Uh, this is the easiest one. And I'll show you uh, where that link is exactly on the home page in a minute as well. So the second group of legislators that you can reach out to in order to gain support or you know, ask them to oppose a certain bill it, are members of relevant committees or those who have addressed similar bills in the past. So as I mentioned, those committees are those uh, groups that are talking about certain topics. So uh, for instance, our state endemic tree bill has been assigned to the labor, culture, and the arts committee. Um, but you know, there are other committees like agriculture and water and land, like I mentioned, who all talk about you know, similar things pertaining to those topics. So you can look for members of those committees in order to gain support or opposition to the bills that you might be interested in. And then you can also look at, you know, again, the, the similar bills. So all the bills will say something um, in relation to what it's, uh, what it's pertaining to. So it'll mention something like bills related to state symbols, which again, going back to the state endemic tree, that's what we're trying to do. So we could look at who has supported bills on state symbols in the past if we want to reach out to them to get their opinion or maybe for them to start rallying support um, in the legislature as well. But you could also, you know, if invasive species is something you're, you're interested in, environment, um, natural resources, all those kinds of things, um, those are folks that you would, uh, that you should look out for and to reach out to. So a third group of legislators that you can reach out to are members of leadership. And so we have basically a president and a vice president on both sides of a legislature, the Senate and House. And in the Senate, they're called president and vice president. So we've got Ronald Kouchi and vice president uh, Michelle Kidani. And on the House, we've got a speaker, Scott Psyche, and the vice speaker, John Mizuno. And basically these members of leadership have the last say on pretty much all of the bills that come through their sides of legislature. So they're pretty important to, to contact as well. And so in a moment, so I did say that it was three things that we can do, but uh, I wrapped up four steps within a step. So I tricked you a little bit, but um, these are gonna go by pretty easily, pretty quickly so that we can learn about what is on the Capitol website and how to use it and kind of a little bit about how to navigate and um, what are the most important things that you're gonna have to look for. So one of the first things that you're gonna have to do is to register at capital.hawaii.gov. Um, so I'm sorry that I, I'm going to be switching back and forth from here to the uh, capital website just to show you in real time kind of where things are and exactly where uh, what you should be doing. So I'm going to stop sharing for a second and head over to the website so I can show you that. Okay, uh, so right here in the top right hand corner is where you would register. And all you need is your name and an email. So it's very simple to sign up and register. And then you can also sign in here. So once you get your account and then you can sign in.
And I will show you in a minute what else that we can do on this page here. So let me go back for a second to my presentation. So the next thing we're doing is looking up bills by the number or with keywords such as maybe endemic tree for the Ohia bill or invasive species, something like that. So for things that you are, you already know the bill number to, for instance, the bill that we're working on is SB 2059. That's already been introduced this legislative session. So it'll take you to this page. It's talking about Ohia. It's designating Ohia as the state endemic tree. We've got a number of introducers here. And it also even tells us what uh, committees that it is currently referred to. So you can find a lot of information and then Right here are the dates and uh, the status of where the bill is at the moment. So right now it's just referred, um, which is the, assigned to those committees. We're still waiting for those um, hearings, for the, the meetings for the committees. Otherwise, if you don't know yet if there is, or if you haven't heard yet about if a bill has been introduced, so if you don't know the number, you can also look up a keyword. Like I mentioned, you can look up something like endemic tree because that's what we're trying to do for Ohia. So you could look that up and it comes up with a search uh, list. So you could see that we also have another bill. It's called HB 2202. And well, this is not the best. I think it might be, needs to be refreshed. Well, that one should look a little similar to uh, the other one, but <clears throat> in any case, you can see that it's looking for endemic tree within whatever the, uh, the language is in the bill or in maybe even somebody's testimony. You can actually see that that's all public, uh, public records here. So the next thing that you can do is to sign up for hearing notices. So what that's going to do is uh, when the bills are being scheduled to be heard, so when there's meetings that's going to be held on these bills, uh, then you can get a notification so that you can, one, watch the, the hearing so you can hear what's being said. Um, and then you can also, most importantly, submit testimony for that bill. So where you would do that, if we're going back to the Capitol website, you can, once you sign in, these buttons right here, these three are gonna actually turn orange. That means that you're in your account, you're signed in. And then you can click this button right here, the hearing notifications. And then if you hopefully already know the bill number, it makes it very easy. You can just click it in here and add. And what, I'll, what it'll do is it's going to uh, send you an email anytime that these, this bill is being scheduled for a hearing. And again, that's important because that's your time to submit testimony on that bill. So this is going to be the best way to keep up with uh, those bills and when it gets scheduled and when it's your time to listen in on and to submit testimony. Um, before I forget, uh, so I mentioned about that find your legislator tool and up here in the right hand corner is that tool with that interactive map. So you can take a look at that as well to find your legislator in your district. Otherwise, the fourth thing that you would do is once that bill is scheduled for a hearing, like I mentioned, those meetings, right? Uh, then you can submit your testimony. It has to be scheduled for a hearing before you can submit testimony. But at that time, you can also, once you submit testimony, you can also request to testify orally. So, you know, before COVID, of course, people could go to the Capitol and, and submit their testimony and testify in person in front of the legislators. Although, of course, post COVID right now, the Capitol is closed to the public. So they're only doing Zoom, uh, Zoom testifying. So you're going to have to sign up for that 
beforehand, at least 24 hours before the hearing, better to do it even before that and um, to get prepared and all of that. And you would do that through the website. There's a couple of ways to do that. So one being that if you sign up for those hearing notifications, you'll get that email and I'll show you what it will look like. And it'll also give you that a link in order to provide your testimony and you can follow the instructions in order to request to testify on Zoom. Otherwise, you can also hit this testimony button, which will just take you directly to a page, which it's gonna show you. Let's enter your bill number, whatever bill that you want to submit testimony on, continue, and then you can follow the instructions on how to submit your testimony there. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, here is the sample of a hearing notice. So that's what you're going to receive once you sign up for those hearing notices on the Capitol website in order to be able to submit testimony or just to know when it's happening. So it'll be listed whether it's in the House or in the Senate, what committee it's in, who are the chair, the vice chair of that committee and other members. And here's all of the information on the date, time and location. All of this information you're actually going to need for your testimony as well. So this is very important. And then also to note that the state is, the Capitol is closed. So this is the way that you would submit testimony. So testimony is important. I'm sure most of you know, because you know legislators try to make the best decisions for us but they don't have the knowledge or experience that some of us have. So we should bring our perspective in order to help guide those decisions. And of course, ultimately what they decide is probably going to affect us in some way, shape or form. So that's why it's so important. All right, so uh, things to include in your testimony. Uh, as I mentioned, a lot of that information is going to come from that hearing notice. So the committee, your hearing date, time, and location, and then you want to have a clear statement of your support or opposition to the bill. And then you state your name and affiliation if you uh, have one. And you start off with a salutation, something like aloha to the chair. You can name the chair, the vice chair, and you can just say other members of the committee. And then a few reasons, and hopefully just a few paragraphs or so, keeping it short and simple is the best way to go. Why you support or oppose this, why they should support or oppose this bill. And you can actually also include something like video, art, or photographs or song as well. And you can add that as an attachment. But try to speak from personal experience or knowledge, um, speak from the heart and be courteous. And then thank them for their time. If you're testifying in person, you may only have two minutes or so. Some committees have to hear a lot of bills. They might give you less time. Or if they don't have as much uh, testifying, uh, people testifying, then you might have more time. But it's good measure to uh, stick it to around tw two minutes just in case. So this is uh, an example, a sample of what a testimony can be formatted like. So this is all the information that you'll get from the hearing notice and st stating in support or in opposition. The salutation, here's the aloha. I, my name, I'm in support. And this is my reasons why I'm supporting this bill. And then I'm ending it off with a mahalo and my name and affiliation. Okay, so just wrapping this up, uh, we've got a few important dates here. So every year, the start of legislative session is on the third Wednesday of January. So this year, it started on the 19th. And any time between then through April, bills can be scheduled for hearings at any time in that uh, between those months. So that's why, again, it's good to sign up for those hearing notices, because it could be in early January, it could be in February or March, we don't know. So it's best to just get those um, notices so that you'll get an email as soon as that happens. And again, that's when you would submit testimony when those hearings are being scheduled. And here at the end of April, 
then that's the end of legislative session. Sometimes it runs a little bit longer into May. And here's a few other resources that you can uh, you can look to. This is actually where I got a lot of my information from. They host a lot of webinars. Um, they have a lot of good information and um, uh, videos, especially videos on navigating the Capitol website. But even just asking them questions. If you have random pressing questions, they're very good and very prompt about answering questions that the public has. That's what they're there for, to help us in order to use our voice and to advocate or to um, participate in the legislature. Completely free as well. So um, I based my whole presentation today off of this uh, PDF uh, um, infographic that I made. So you can scan the QR code if you want to just download that. It's just a one page or very simple. Um, you can, this is the URL for that same infographic. Um, I'm happy to take questions via email or if you want to ask, I, I can an, try to answer some questions now as well, of course. But you know, I hope that um, you have seen that this is not so scary and anybody can do it. And um, I will be upfront that this is going to be my first time ever actually submitting testimony, and I'm very excited about it. And I hope that uh, you folks have um, learned a little bit of something and will be inclined to do so as well, especially as you are listening and learning about high, throughout this whole month of Hi Sam. Um, and hopefully, you have the passion and, and knowledge now to to take action and to. Uh, do some advocacy this year. Um, so again, we've, we're in legislative session right now. There's a lot to look at um, across the board and especially in conservation. So I encourage you to start looking up um, some information on that and hopefully you can use some of this information to get the word out and to advocate. And thank you. Thank you so much, Kylie, for that. Um, I believe you had one question in the chat box. Um, from Kylie, <laughs> um, and she wants to know, what is the difference between the House and the Senate? That is a good question, and I was um, actually going to look that up <laughs> at some point uh, before this, right before this uh, uh, presentation, but um, I do believe that one of the main differences is that they are elected for a different amount of time, so um, I, I believe that the house is elected for a shorter amount of time that they have in office and the senators are elected for a longer period of time. Um, other than that, there's, as far as I can tell for how they, sometimes they run their meetings differently. Sometimes, um, you know, how you submit testimony can be a little bit different. They have different rules um, on, um, uh, how they conduct their meetings. So there's there's subtle differences between them, um, but a, a big thing is just that they're kind of the check and balance on each other. So once one side, if the House, all committees say that they believe that this should become a bill, it's always kind of a good idea, I think, to get the Senate to also agree. And so, you know, that the whole legislature um, can agree that this should become a law or not. And then Chelsea just wanted to mention that also the Senate um, also represents a larger district than representatives. So that's another difference that um, could be noted as well. Thank you so much, Chelsea. Yeah. But besides that, I don't see anything else in the Q&A in the chat. So I'm going to hand it over to Elizabeth to, um, for the final conclusions. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Kaylee. I found this so very interesting and I'm excited about following some bills and submitting testimony this year. And I, I so appreciate, I'm sure the audience does too, all of these tips and instructions for how to get involved in participating with our legislature. It's so important. Um, so thank you for everybody that joined us today. And just so you know, if you missed some of this or you want to share this information with others, this whole presentation will be posted to YouTube, to the Hawaii Invasive Species Council YouTube coming up soon. And I just wanted to post again one more time that link to the webpage that has the whole month of Hawaii Invasive Species Awareness um, 
presentations, volunteer opportunities and activities. There's a whole lot of stuff going on all month, um, more than I can even just mention right now. So thank you all very much for joining us. Thank you, Kylie, for that wonderful presentation. And aloha, everyone. Aloha, thank everyone. you. Thank you so much. Aloha. Great job, Kylie.